This is Lewis Brackpool for Rebel News and today I am outside of the Houses of Parliament across the River Thames. Now, the royals are recognised across the world and if you think of Great Britain, you may just think of the royal family. Since the passing of Elizabeth II, Prince Charles is now proclaimed King Charles III and his coronation is set for some time next year. But it doesn't take a detective to work out that Charles keeps some bad company. Now that Charles has become king, many people from both sides of the political spectrum are concerned about the new king due to his previous associations. How on earth do you raise 10 million pounds? in three years. With impeccably bad timing, a relationship Prince Charles would rather forget has been dragged up for the world to devour in a major new Netflix series. It's, it's not just a couple, you know, it's not just three or four, there's absolutely loads of files of it. December 22nd, 1989. I wonder if you would ever be prepared to meet my sister-in-law, the Duchess of York. I can't help feeling that it would be extremely helpful to her if you could. I feel she could do with some of your straightforward common sense. Sir Charles says to Jimmy, I attach a copy of my memo on disasters, which incorporates your points and I showed to my father, and he showed it to Her Majesty. Jimmy had sent back to Charles a five-part manual titled Guidelines for Members of the Royal Family and Their Staff. Jimmy seems to be a kind of unofficial chief advisor to the Prince of Wales. Charles also has close ties within the organisation, the World Economic Forum, parroting their narrative of a great reset. We have a golden opportunity to seize something good from this crisis. Its unprecedented shockwaves may well make people more receptive to big visions of change. A global crises like pandemics and climate change know no borders and highlight just how interdependent we are as one people sharing one planet. We, start, we need only to look to the United Nations Secretary General, to the IMF, uh, the EU, the Petersburg Climate Dialogue, the Canadian government, the COP26 Universities Network, and business leaders around the world to see this. Therefore, we have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. So how do you tackle a subject in the most sensible but critical way when the new head of state is part of this organization. It is truly a great honor and privilege to welcome His Royal Highness, to welcome him back to the annual meeting. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown us just how devastating a global cross-border threat can be. Climate change and biodiversity loss are no different. So as you can see, there's a lot more to old Charlie boy than meets the eye. He's friends with people that are openly opposed to freedom of choice, and some of his friends are amongst the richest billionaires on the planet. But the natural question to ask is if the royals are supposed to be apolitical, what does that mean for the future of Great Britain if even the king can't help but dabble in politics? So this has been Lewis Brackpool reporting outside of the Houses of Parliament for Rebel News. If you enjoy my honest boots on the ground journalism, you can now help support me over at ukreporters.co.uk. Visit the website, keep yourself up to date with all of my latest reports. And if you'd like to donate, you can. ukreporters.co.uk. Thank you.